Welcome to the CyberSec My Grant Podcast. I'm Femi, your host and guide in the dynamic world of cybersecurity. Here we dive into insightful interviews, stories, and discussions with industry experts, professionals, and thought leaders. Whether you're just stepping into cybersecurity realm or you're a seasoned veteran, our goal is to empower you with the knowledge you need to thrive. From industry trends to career guidance, success stories, and actionable tips, we cover it all. Before we jump into today's episode, a quick request. If you find the content valuable and think others would too, don't keep it to yourself. Share the CyberSec Migrant Podcast and our YouTube channel with your friends, colleagues, and fellow enthusiasts. Your recommendations would help us grow and create a community that fosters learning and collaboration. And now, let's get into the heart of our security insights. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to this episode of the CyberSec Migrant. So hello and welcome again to another episode on the CyberSec Migrant Podcast. And today, like I said, we've got a guest who is a seasoned IT veteran. Uh, My guest for today is Ashif Ahmed, who is a seasoned IT security architect. He's currently working with the BC Provincial Health Services Authority, and he has a rich professional background, previously serving as the Chief Information Security Officer, CISO, at the Fortune 500 company in the US. Additionally, he holds the esteemed position of co-director of the certification program at ISACA Vancouver chapter. He's renowned for his expertise and he boasts an impressive array of, I know this, 56 and counting industry leading certifications, including the CISSP, the ISSNP, the SSCP, CCSP, CISA, CISM, CGEIT, CGPSE, and CCSK which are, if you know certifications and cybersecurity, anything at all, those are some of the top certifications in cybersecurity and Ashif holds them all. Uh, He's also a dedicated educator uh, and he imparts his knowledge at uh, Vancouver Community College, Algonquin College, University of Calgary, and Stella College in the USA as well. And to date, he has trained over 3,000 and counting professional strategies in illustrious career. So he's he's very good when he knows what it is to train people. He knows what it means when you talk about certification. And his contributions extend beyond the classroom as well. He's a certified trainer for both ISACA, ISC2, and PECB, as well as a blog writer and an author of CISSP books, CISA books, and CCSK exam questions as well. So when I was thinking about who do we talk to about you know, certifications and training and knowledge. Who's the best person to? I don't think we can get anyone better than Ashif. So Ashif, welcome to CyberSec Migrant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, for me. It's, it's been an honor and pleasure to be here. And obviously, like, I'm looking forward to our discussions. And yeah, thank you once again for inviting me here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So let's let's dive right in because, you know, there's always, and I'm sure you've, we've had this conversation before, there's always this yeah. argument about, you know, certifications, training, certifications, training, in your experience, you know, as an authorized trainer, how do you see a balance between formal certifications, on-the-job training, hands-on learning for someone who wants to become a cybersecurity professional? Yeah, I think like, you know, yeah, in, in today's world, like whenever we are talking about like the specific skill set in cyber, we need to have some certifications on our back. The reason behind that, that we are working worldwide. So whenever we are just, you know, getting through any kind of like the knowledge base or experience, the hiring manager or the people who are kind of like involved into that hiring, they really want to know that whether we do have some skills which can be relevant everywhere in the world. And actually, like, you know, certifications can help you to just, you know, get through that. Giving an example, like, you know, whenever you're talking about like the audits, all information security audits, and whenever, for example, I'm hiring for people, I really want to know the experience and hands-on experience, like, you know, whatever he did in his previous job or her previous job career. But obviously, like, I really want to know, like, the whether he or she has got the CISA, which is kind of like the gold standard in information security audits. So more or less, like, you know, certification is really important to get the call and obviously, like, the finding those kind of like the interviews quite easily because you do mm-hmm. have that kind of like the knowledge which has been kind of i should say appreciated everywhere in the world and obviously like in job market i i should say like I sh- certification is not everything that is for sure because if you have the certification still you need to have the skills and obviously you need to replicate the similar kind of like the knowledge base in your job role because if you have the hands-on experience and you really can connect with your kind of like the knowledge base and also like the certifications with your current job role, that should be golden. Mm-hmm. 
So I believe certification is very important uh, to just get through. And obviously, the, I, I believe in cybersecurity, we are living in a world where we need uh, continual development and improvement. So certifications will definitely help you to from going strength to strength and making sure that you know the set of the art technologies and also like the, how we are dealing with different kinds of the stuffs. You you know about like the uh, ISAC, ISC2 and PCB certifications. We need to go through lots of like the CPEs every mm-hmm. year. So that is something really important because if we have the certifications and we stop there, there is no point of getting lots of certifications. Obviously, we need to get the certifications, understanding the core concepts of it, and obviously trying to get some more knowledge and experience based on that particular like uh, skill set, which might be really like a pro- proven beneficial for anyone whoever is coming to the cybersecurity world or maybe want to just you know go to a different kind of like, a stature in their career. What like as far as the cybersecurity is concerned. Yeah, so that's true. Very cool. And uh, one of the things you said there is like, you know, yes, certifications aren't everything, you know, but it gives you a baseline. Um, someone I know once said, certification is like, it's like when you say to someone, you know how to drive, you know. Yeah. What's the proof that you know how to drive? You know, Absolutely. a driver's license. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean you've driven every car in the world, but mm-hmm. it gives me the confidence that if I put you behind the wheel of a car, yeah, you wouldn't crash it. Right. Absolutely. At least, Absolutely. you know, and, you wouldn't and, on and purpose you can start it. And it's, you know, yeah, if it's kind of like the 30 or 50 or you're in the speed limit and you you can reach to the destinations, that's that's kind of like the belief certifications can. Or maybe like I should say like this certifications can give you that kind of the assurance that we might do that work. We do have that kind of the bookish knowledge already. And if we have some kind of experience, even for, for example, like, you know, real world example, some of the cases, whenever we are hiring the security analyst, we really want to know like the whether do have the commercial security plus a plus, or maybe like the CC from IC2 at the bare minimum mm-hmm. level, just because of that, we really want to know the interest of the person, like, you know, whether yeah. he's really into the cyber security, understand the core concepts and everything. Obviously, whenever he's on the job, there should be a job trainings and everything, but I really want to know, or people really want to know, like, you know, whether he had that kind of the knack in cyber or learn those kind of the topics, maybe CIA, maybe uh, different kind of the tools, attacks and all the other stuff, that would be much more easier to train that particular person whenever they're on being onboarded. So that is seriously important. Yeah. Yeah, true. And that's what I was thinking, because, you know, with most certifications, this, this is the argument that people have made. Certifications are very theoretical, you know, yeah. it's about, you know, how many frameworks can you remember how many domains can you memorize you know okay, yeah, yeah. whereas on the job training requires you to actually work with those tools and applications on a daily Absolutely. basis so right. how would you say is the best way to bridge that gap between you know theoretical knowledge that you get from certifications and the practical experience you get working on the job yeah so i i believe like you know the f- first thing first is kind of like the Choosing the best career path for a person is seriously important because whenever I'm talking about like the bigger certifications like, you know, CISSP or SCCP or CCSP or CSASISM, I need some experience, right? Three years, five years experience down the line. So I know like what I have done in the past few years and how I can collaborate those kind of the things with my current skill sets with the certification. But if I believe that I need also the hands-on certifications altogether because I do have the certified ethical hacking and some of the, like, the hands-on tools. That is also important because it's kind of like the way out. It's like whenever people are talking about like the GRC, there might be some kind of like the certifications which can help to know the stuff, but obviously they need some on-job training as well. For example, I want to go for pen testing. I need to go for some kind of like the other hands-on like the devices or tools. Then I need to figure out like, the, okay, which is the best certifications which can give me that kind of like the impetus to make sure that I learn the hands-on stuffs over there too. So at the end of the day, whenever you are thinking about like the, some of the certifications which can give you some knowledge, some of the certifications which can give you some hands-on experience as well. So depending on the scenario, depending on your current job roles and depending on kind of like the current need, the people can choose like the whichever is being really, really good. And also like the, I found it really interesting, like you know, whenever people are working in cybersecurity world, they do have lots of options. Like, you know, for example, if I want to learn something new, there are lots of like, the teams available. There are lots of like the scope available. So people need to find out the interest first and then go beyond their glories. Because if I feel that I need to just understand the pen testing uh, w- overnight, that would not be possible. So I need to lo- learn the stuffs, going to the, the, like the grinding the whole kind of like the barriers and everything. And then I need to make sure that I can learn the stuff. So obviously choosing the right certifications, that is also important and choosing the best kind of like the space where they can work together to learn the stuff from, from their job. Those are important too. So if we can collide those things each other, that would be like a good kind of like the prospect for a person. 
Okay, and still on the thought of you know choosing the right path and the right certification, you know, like 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 you 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 own, you currently hold fifty six current certifications mm-hmm. and counting because I know I wouldn't let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> um, that's the thing. How how do because there's so many specializations. Do you want to go into GRC? There's specializations for GRC. Do you want to go into yeah. risk? There's specialization for risk. Do you want to go into governance? There's specialization of governance. So depending on what you want to do or paint testing. So mm-hmm. um, do you think that this trend of you know specialization and specialized specialized certifications is encouraging a more specialized workforce within cybersecurity? And then how does it then provide for a well-rounded cybersecurity professionals? Because I've heard the argument sometimes, you should be a specialist or you should be a generalist or you should have a basic knowledge. How does this, you know, certifications are getting more and more specialized, you know? Yeah. Azure, we have their own for their platform, AWS for their platform, GCP for their platform. How does this, you know, align with getting a well-rounded professional at the end of the day? Yeah, very good question, Femi. So I believe like whenever we are thinking about some kind of specific tools, we need to do them some generalization. How? Suppose, for example, if you're talking about like the cloud security, there are lots of like the tools available, Google Cloud, AWS, Microsoft Azure, lots of like the stuff, and also like the some native cloud as well. But if we just ask someone, and if we tell someone that you need to come over, you need to do some cloud security-based stuff in my organization, and which kind of an expertise you do have? People might say that I work in AWS. Oh, you work in AWS, but I do have Azure. Oh boy. Then what will I do? So yeah. specialization is really important. But obviously at the end of the day, you need to have some specific knowledge on overall architecture. So for example, if I have the CCSP, like the cloud security the gold standard in cybersecurity or even cloud security world, yeah. That, that means like I know the cloud security for all the clouds. So if someone hires me and he's talking about like that I do have this platform, I would rather say like, you know, I can do the cloud security in each and every platforms because I do have that specific knowledge yeah. on cloud. So for me, uh, or like the, I, I strongly believe that obviously like they seriously important to just get to some vendor specific certifications. Like for example, if you want to go for AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud, whatever you choose, but obviously like the vendor neutral certifications are seriously important because that will give you a, always an added advantage and help you to stand from the crowd. Yeah, that's true. I've, I've always thought about it and I've always said sometimes the vendor agnostic certifications are good to have as a start because that mm-hmm. gives you a framework or a foundation that it cuts across true. different platforms. You know, so mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. going to Google or you're going to Azure, right. you have the foundations there. And yes, like, for example, like cloud security, like I said, CCSP, that's the gold standard for um, right. cloud security. You know, um, so now this is going to be sort of like a double question because I was just thinking as you were speaking. Mm-hmm. Now, we know that in our industry, we have to continuously learn. If you don't learn continuously, you're going to become obsolete, like the diskette, <laughs> you know, the yeah, floppy disk. <laughs> so you've got to improve constant, consistent, absolutely, uh, absolutely. both on the job and certifications, you know, and there's been, a, in recent months, there's been a growth in, you know, because I know years ago, it would be, you go to, you go to university or a college, mm-hmm. you take a two-year diploma, mm-hmm. and then you build your career through that. But these days, there's a lot of, you know, shorter, more compressed boot camps that take, you know, you can take, you know, you can focus on cloud security or network security or, you know, GRC and take a boot camp and get yourself up to speed. Yeah. So how does, you know, how do employers view, you know, certifications and, you know, this short boot camps compared to somebody who has gone to four years of formal education in a university mm-hmm. to get, you know, a degree? How, what's the, would you advise someone to say, oh, you have to go to school and get a four year degree? And then do a certification or take a boot camp, you know, and then take a certification. I know there's no right or wrong answer, but as an yeah. expert in the industry, what would you recommend? How would you advise people? Very good question. <laughs> okay, giving some scenarios. So for example, like if you talk about like uh, some certifications, which is really big. For example, if you talk about like the, I recently like the wrote a book on CISSP from IC2, and I, I, I wrote Domain 2 and Domain 8 again. So what I found here is kind of, it's big and you, you have passed the CSSP, you know that it's not something that we can just get everything from the bootcamp. For example, like if you want to go for what my suggestions for my students all the time, that if I just, you know, take some trainings for CSSP and all, I always say that 
five days boot camp, ten days boot camp, one month boot camp is not more like even close to enough for yeah. these big certifications. Yeah. So it's something that you need to study quite hard. Obviously, you don't need to go to some kind of like universities for that one because you don't have enough time mm-hmm. to just you know get to yeah. one certifications for six months or so. But I believe like you know for me like whenever I pass any certifications, I do have a specific plan. For example, like the, I'm preparing for three months, six months, or four months. Yeah. The best part is kind of like that I'm regularly studying. That is the key. Like, you know, if you read one page in a single day, read one page, that's absolutely fine. But you are improving. That actually creates one kind of like the mindset that I'm, I'm still kind of, like, for example, I'm at 233 page at CBK and tomorrow I'll be at 235 page. So I'm still developed two pages. So yeah. this kind of like the mindset actually really helpful to just get through like an after one month, even if like if you just study five pages in a single day, you find 150 pages has gone from the book. So this kind of like the mindset is seriously important. Obviously, like the five days training can give you a little bit of like the ideas about what is included in the exam or how do you prepare for the exam. They can give you some guidance, but if you want to study hard and pass the exam, I rather believe that, you know, study hard, maybe at your home, maybe listen to podcast, understanding the core concepts, seeing, seeing some videos and making sure that you understand the kind, kind, kind of like the concept for a certain period of time. So if yeah. you have that particular time in your hand, you can just at least like you know make some space to just create some knowledge base and everything definitely will pass the exam yeah. so for me like you know boot camp is really good but that can give you a direction you need yes. to do the hard kind of like the work to make sure that you pass it yeah yeah and i think that's why isc2 and isaac always insist that even if you want to do a certification you have to have some years of experience because like i, yeah. I was telling someone you know, like when I was preparing for my CISSP, I would, it took me months to prepare for the CISSP before I <laughs> decided to do it. But then I was telling someone, it's, it was, when I was preparing for the CISSP, hmm. it was, I was glad that I had worked so many years in the industry already because then I could actually relate my own the job experience. Somebody who has no experience at all, so, or someone who is changing careers, for example, would struggle in that situation. Yeah. So right. I think that's part of the reasons why that happens. And Still talking about how things change and the dynamic nature of our industry, you know, like, for example, I know the CCSP exam was refreshed August last year. Yeah. Uh, CISSP is getting refreshed in May this year, I think. Yeah, CISSP is also getting yeah. refreshed this year. And I'm sure that's probably in response to the changing, changes in our industry, you know, generative mm-hmm. AI, all of these things that come up. And, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Do, you know, so how do, is, is this as a result of the certifications adapting to ensure that those who hold those certifications are current with later skills, you know, and as somebody who's on the inside, as a trainer, as an instructor, as somebody who provides questions for the, um, for these exams, you mm-hmm. know, what are the things you're going through your mind as you're preparing those things to put them into the questions and, you know, put it out there for us yeah. to take? Yeah, absolutely. Like whenever I'm preparing the questions for the exams, like for example, CISA or like the CCS or CISSP, I believe like, these kind of like the knowledge base are seriously important because we need to stay ahead of our time and we need to make sure that we understand the concepts of cyber and obviously the lots of like examples we need to put forward to make people understand. Cybersecurity is not that easy. Like, you know, people need to like spend lots of years to become successful in this trend. Obviously it's not impossible, but I'm not saying that it's, it's too kind of like the easy peasy for the people. It's not working in the park for sure. So I believe like, you know, whenever we're creating the questions, we always keep in things in mind, like what's the current trend? What kind of like yeah. the security, like the problems or like the pitfalls we do have in our kind of environment. And we are trying to make sure that we cover every bits and pieces of it, just to make sure that people who are currently coming on board it, or maybe like the working cybersecurity for a longer period of time, they can understand, or they do have that particular, like the knowledge base to tackle the ever changing field. Yeah. So that is something really seriously, seriously important. And obviously the, the questions, because you know, for most of the like the cybersecurity vendor exams, we do have scenario-based question. So like if that has been the case for an organization, so what would be you do if you had been the CISO of the organization? So these kind of like, the questions are, I should say, like the regular in your exam. So I believe like the, we, we always design these kind of like, scenario-based questions just to just put that person in a situation and make them understand that this is something like you can see every day and night. So you need to be ready for those kind of like the things. So obviously like, you know, we always try to make sure that we, we cover those kind of like the aspects in cybersecurity whenever we're preparing those. 
Yeah, that's true. So definitely, like we like we've, we've said and it's been shown several times, certifications are important. Yeah, but on the job training is important. Absolutely, uh, it's important to also you know get some hands on learning so you can get mm. long term success. So for someone who is sort of just starting their journey in cybersecurity, either as a fresh person in cybersecurity, you know, fresh out of high school, going into computers, mm -hmm. or somebody who is saying, hey, I want to change a career. I want to go into cybersecurity. Because they say there's money in cybersecurity. I don't know if that's true. But, um, <laughs> so <laughs> um, what advice would you give to someone regarding, you know, a balance between certifications on the job experience and hands-on learning? Because someone might look at you and say, oh, he has 56 certifications. I must have 56 mm -hmm. certifications to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how do you, what, what would you advise someone, as someone who has seen it all, you know, how do you strike that balance between, you know, certifications yeah. and training and learning? Excellent. So the thing is that, like, for people, like starting with people who really wants to come to the cybersecurity as a fresh graduate, or maybe like there's a fresh bunch of people. For them, like, you know, I suggest to go for the entry-level certifications. One or two is enough. Like, you know, yeah. if they go for like the certified in cybersecurity, which is a free yeah. exam from ISC2. Yeah. And obviously, like, they do have lots of like the resources available. And obviously, like, the CompTIA certifications are really good because CompTIA, if you have kind of the security plus or CompTIA plus or some kind of the certifications, those are really good. Yeah. And if, he, if they had those certifications, like one or two certifications, that would be a deal breaker for them. So they just go to that kind of like the particular portions and just try to make sure that they know the stuff before just pass, passing the exam and everything. That will help them to just pass the interview process. Those people who are all already like, you know, past three, five years or maybe more than that and come to the cybersecurity arena and everything, my suggestion should be like, you know, trying to get through some, obviously if they do have the entry-level certifications, that would be good. If they yeah. don't have starting with the entry-level certifications and trying to get, because they don't have experience, right? So yeah, they yeah. they have some kind of like the way out to go for the bigger certifications because if they have CISSP, if they have SSCP, CCSP, if they have ISSNP, if they have CISA, CISM, that will give another advantage like you know people yeah. can understand because we always want to know what kind of like the hunger you do have to become successful in this world so if we get to know that oh that person passed two or three big certifications that means he has got the knack to come over and become successful in this realm so i believe like you know for the newer people or the newbies obviously like the one or two certifications come to you or like the sorry, cc would be good and yeah. for the new yeah. the old aged people or maybe like the people who have already passed like a three, five years, they can start with the like the smaller ones and then going to the like the bigger ones just to make sure that they have vast amount of knowledge before putting their like the, I should say food step in the, this world. <laughs> yes. Like in the CISSP that takes forever to learn or the CISM, you know. Um, yeah. and you know, as an aside, just you know, just curious to see what you think. What would you say is um what would you say is the now, and I, and this, this is not a fair question to ask. It's not. It's not actually fair because it, it, it could be biased. But what would you say is the if someone wanted to say I wanted to get to the top of my career, so like you know, I wanted to be a CISO like you, where you know, go all the way to the top. What three or four certification would you say absolutely must have to be able to actually rise to the pinnacle of your career? That if you want to be you know a CISO or a top person in security, a C suite level, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to have these certifications to you know get you yeah. there. Absolutely. So for for me, like you know, whenever yeah, I I was like the I got the CISO role whenever I was only kind of like the twenty eight or twenty nine on that particular time. So that was quite early for me. But I believe like you know the certifications. If you, if someone has got CISSP, that should be there from the very beginning. Yeah. And obviously, like you know, the CISA, which is very good because they need to do a lot of like the auditing stuff in the organizations yeah. because they will manage those kind of things. And obviously, I believe like the certified ethical hacking because that thing actually make up their minds for cybersecurity attacks in the organizations, like you know, how okay. people are doing some pen testing or maybe like the, the red team, blue team and purple team, how mm -hmm. they're just you know, doing their own kind of the work. And they can create some kind of like the scenario based situations in the organizations to manage the state of like the current attacks, for example, like the zero days, DDoS, man in the middle, all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, and obviously like the, from that one, I would also rather suggest to go for the CGEIT, which is okay. an ISO certifications because IT governance is the key and CISO needs to play a pivotal role Pedro. in that particular process. So if they do have those four certifications, I believe, and also like the, the five, number five, which is one of my favorites is CCSP because we are moving to the cloud, cloud. like hell. So these five certifications is, I should say like the always on the top 
on the particular like the certification list at least bare minimum these five so that mostly like the, all those like the pages are covered whenever they're just becoming a seesaw of a bigger organization or a, like the smaller medium enterprises altogether yeah so you heard it here first on the cybersec migrant if you want to write to a c-level suite in cybersecurity, you have to have the cissp the ccsp the cgit the certified ethical hacker and what was it? CISA. And CISA, C I S A. So if you have those five, then you're in a good position. If you want, if you want to add a bonus, throw in the CISM as well. That would. Yeah, that would be absolutely. Good. But obviously, like the mostly covered in the CISSP. So. Yeah. Yes, that exactly. CISSP would cover that as well. Anyway, so yeah, right. Once you have those five, then you know you can go to any company yeah. and say, "I am going to be your CISO." <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so but it's, been, it's been very good talking up talking with you today. I think a lot of people have learned, and I, and I know this discussion is one that a lot of people are, you know certifications or no certifications should i or should i not do it and certifications aren't cheap which is why people will do that yeah. so I, I thank you for coming on today to sort of you know shed a bit more light on all of this you know just as we were round up so now I, at the beginning i reeled off your success story and i know you've been very successful but what would you you know if you're going to share your success story and someone said you know just give me you know two pieces of advice i'm starting my career in cyber security or i'm transitioning to cyber security hmm. um what are the three things you think I should do to position myself for success, you know, aside from just certifications or training? Yeah. The first thing is kind of like the quest of knowledge, uh, the hung hunger for yeah. just getting lots of like the knowledge base, lots of like the resources are available. Uh, so we need to just we need to learn the best use of those kind of like the techniques uh, to become a successful person in cyber. Uh, second thing should be like, you know, understanding the whole kind of like the cybersecurity posture for different organizations. For example, if someone is thinking about like the, how other organizations are thinking about cyber, what kind of like, the things they are implementing or why those tools are, because if you talk about lots of like the tools, like we can talk about like the Kali Linux, Metasploit, Bobsuit, CrowdStrike, uh, Splunk, lots of like the tools that are available. So need to understand, need to learn what kind of like the tools are available in the market and what kind of like, the attributes they do have, which might be really good for the organizations. And third thing is kind of like the, I should say like the continuously just grinding the stuff in cyber from the different perspective like for example we're talking about one technical part in cyber right but we need to also understand there are lots of avenues in cyber security you need to talk about governance you need to talk about risk you need to talk about compliance you need to talk about like the, how people are becoming successful in the sound like the other parts of the world so whenever we're talking about like the cyber and we can talk the common language which is being like the really available in the market or different kind of in the worlds we need to understand that kind of the people's brain and making yeah. sure that we are doing the right thing at the right place. So if we do have that kind of like the specific knowledge base and getting through like different kind of like the technologies, understanding the core concepts, and also making sure that we learn the best things from the best kind of like the people or the best kind of like the resources, because there are thousands of resources, people need to understand which should be good for them, which should not be like that. Because for example, like if people are saying like, hey, Yash, if I, I really want to go for like the CISA certification. And I'm saying only because, you know, like the recently I con like the conducted a training on CISA yeah. mm -hmm. or ISACA banking chapter. And I always told my students that whenever you're just getting through ISACA certifications, no need to read any kind of like the internet stuff. The book and the question booklet is enough. So these kind of like the things need to know at the very first place, because if you don't know like the which resources you will go through, for example, like the CISA or CISSP, there is a kind of like, the, I should say like the Pacific oceans kind of like the resources are available in the market yeah, yeah so yeah. it's really tough so understanding the thing we, uh, that if there is a mentor we do have the ISAC of Vancouver mentorship programs and everything so finding a good mentor trying to get sure that you know everything all kind of like the stuffs and also making sure that you do have some bit of like this knowledge with the certifications on your back yeah it would be good for anyone who is coming over this kind of time become successful as well success is something like the, for me success is something whatever i really want to do i can this is success exactly. for me exactly. so before doing those kind of other things i need to know that stuff otherwise like there will be a disaster waiting for me on the other end <laughs> <laughs> absolutely true absolutely true I totally agree. no one wants a disaster that's one of the things risk no no risk we reduce the risk to the bare minimum right. as possible yes but that was that was great it was so nice to talk to you today thank you so much Same here, for coming man. on um and i know we've learned a lot so at least people now know that 
Don't yeah. just ignore certifications. They might be expensive, but there's 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 a reason why you have to get the certification. They help you with your training, yeah. they help you with your knowledge as well, and it also helps you to be able to actually you know speak with your peers when you're talking in the room. Mm-hmm. So that's also good. And of course, don't uh, overlook the importance of training, hands-on training as well, and on the job. Yeah, so, uh, thank you so much for coming on today. And so you've had it here. And so until the next time when we come again with another conversation, this has been Femi on the Saga Set Migrant. Thank you and have a good day. And thank you to Ashi for coming on as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Femi. Yeah. Take care. Have a good one. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the CyberSec Migrant Podcast. We hope you found today's insights valuable and inspiring. If you enjoyed today's conversation, make sure to check out our other episodes for more in-depth interviews stories and discussions with cybersecurity experts and thought leaders. Remember, the world of cybersecurity is ever evolving and we're here to guide you through it. Whether you're just starting your journey or are a seasoned professional, there's always something new to discover. And one more ask, don't keep this knowledge to yourself. Share the Cybersec Migrant podcast on our YouTube channel with your friends, colleagues, and anyone who's passionate about cybersecurity. And let's build a community that thrives on knowledge and collaboration. Thank you for being a part of our growing audience and your support means the world to us. Feel free to reach out to us with your feedback, questions and comments either on our Twitter handle at CybersecMigrant or on Instagram at CybersecMigrant. Keep learning, keep growing and until next time, this is Femi signing off. Stay secure.